Good evening freelancers, welcome to another Anthem video. I'm PTT and tonight we're going to be going over all of the information that came out today from the Anthem dev teams in their Ask Me Anything About Anthem session. Now there is a lot to go over here so I will be doing some paraphrasing but I want to get through this as quickly as possible because I really really do want to get some sleep tonight. So. With that aside, let's just jump straight into it. The first question is, will we have the option to do strongholds on all difficulties solo? And the answer is no. Now, I know this will get on the back of some people that want to do these solo. I mean, I personally would like to give it a go, but I get why they're doing it. So yeah, unfortunately, it's not gonna be something we can do. Next, will there be a spectator camera for when we are down? And the answer is not for launch. Now, I really wish that this is something that comes in sooner rather than later. I hate being down. Everyone hates being down. But to see this big red dot on the screen or the, you know this big logo that says you are down, you are dead and not be able to watch anything else and give valuable feedback to the team. Yeah, that, this is definitely something I want to see coming sooner rather than later. But I would love to know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Next question then, will you add melee weapons? The answer is we have melee weapons as to swappable ones, not at launch. Now, they do use this a lot, not at launch. Now, you could take that to mean that they will come later down the line, or you could take it as they're not going to be there ever. Who knows at this point, you know, not at launch is a very vague answer. But yeah, for now, that's all we've got. So yeah, let's move on. The next question is, is there a possibility to increase the maximum players in free play? Uh, the answer is unlikely to ever reach launch bay numbers as there is a lot going on in free play. Now, personally, I would like to see more than four players in free play. I would love to get six or eight friends together and go and explore the world. Yeah, this is, again, something I hope comes around sooner rather than later. I understand why they can't do 12 or 16 players. You know, it is a massive world and there is an awful lot going on with world events and, and, and hidey holes and things like that. So I get it. But personally, yeah, I would like to see more players in free play again sooner rather than later. Next then, will we be able to change our booster color? The answer is not at launch. We do want to add this though. Again, something that would be really, really cool. Change your boosters, red, pink, purple, green, orange, whatever color you want. That would be something I would pay for. Again, I don't mind cosmetic microtransactions. I don't normally buy into them, but there are certain things I may indeed dip my hand into my wallet to if they're actually really cool and this could probably be one of them. Next then, can we have custom waypoints? The answer is I'm signing Ben up to do this after launch right now. Now, I think we all know that this is something that will come 100%. It is a very, very frequently asked question. Okay, I'm sure you all experienced it in the demo. Every few seconds you're opening up your map to see if you're going in the right direction. Being able to set a waypoint to a certain point is, is a must in a game like this. You know, I, I can't think of any game that has a massive open world like this where you can't actually set your own custom waypoints. So yeah, I think this is gonna come sooner rather than later. But again, you know, what do you think guys? Let me know in the comment section down below. Next question, will there be a photo mode? And the answer is not at launch, but it's widely requested. Again, similar to waypoints, this is something that the community have been asking for a lot. And let's be honest, with the customization that is in Anthem around your javelins and such a beautiful world, why wouldn't you have a photo mode and allow people to show that off? I mean, yes, some people have got very creative already, putting their backs to things to, you know, take their javelin out of the picture and then be able to take a really good shot and, you know, Photoshop some of the UI out of it. But having a dedicated photo mode, you know, Assassin's Creed, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, that kind of photo mode would be brilliant and definitely something that we would all love. Next then, what kind of cosmetics will we be able to look forward to? Uh, the answer is armor, emotes, banners, vinyls, and hopefully more things as we bring the tech online. So that kind of ties in with the booster thing we were talking about earlier. Again, guys, you know, I don't know what your take is on, you know, microtransactions, cosmetic only, stuff like that. I very rarely buy into cosmetics at all because they are just that, they are cosmetic. That being said, as I said earlier, if there's something that I really like, then yes, I may dip my hand into my wallet, but I probably won't be doing it that often. Next then, is it possible to add new javelins? The answer is it's possible, nothing to talk about at this time. Now, 
I would take this as a given personally. I think, you know, if they're planning a long life cycle for the game, then adding in new javelins is something that will happen. I don't see it happening very quickly, maybe not even this year, but I do see it happening later down the line. Again, what do you think in the comment section down below? Next, can we mass salvage items? The answer is yes, through the vault. Now, if you didn't know, this is useful for crafting materials and things like that. So again, very handy to know. Uh, the next question is, when using a specific javelin, do you get more loot for the javelin in use or is it random? The answer is loot is biased towards the javelin you are using. Now, this is really good. Uh, we know it was a bit of a bug, but in the demo, there was a lot of gear dropping for you know other javelins that you weren't using. So hopefully that's in quite a bit of a change. Um, you know, If I'm playing on a Storm or a Colossus or a Ranger, I want to get loot drops for that class, not other classes. But, you know, it, it's one of them. I suppose you're always going to get some drops for other classes. I just want to see more for my class than a class I'm not using. Next question then, are you exploring the possibility of companions for our javelins? The answer is no, this is not being considered for Anthem. So yeah, basically pets are out of the question. I get this, you know, it's a game with huge verticality, flying and stuff like that. You really want like a pet grab it or something with boosters that flies alongside you. Actually, now I say that, that would actually be pretty cool. Having having one of them little creatures kind of flying around with you, maybe give them some cannons on their back. I'm digressing, guys, it's not gonna happen, but it would be pretty cool. Uh, next question, can you lock items so you don't delete by accident? The answer is you can't delete things you have equipped. There is no other locking system, good idea though. Now, again, I go to this point where, the, you know, it's like waypoints, a lot of games like this, where there's a lot of loot, uh, you wanna hoard things, they have a system where you can lock certain gear. Destiny has it, The Division has it, I know a few other games have it as well. I definitely think this is something that needs to be added sooner rather than later. Um, I don't think it's going to be too much of a problem early on, but after a couple of weeks, maybe a month or two into the game, and we're all kind of grinding the Grand Master difficulties, and we're getting those Masterworks, Legendaries, Epic, stuff like that, that is when we're going to want to be locking our God Rolled gear so we don't accidentally delete it. So, yeah, I hope this gets added sooner rather than later. Again, um, next question. Will there be a vote to kick? The answer is we would rather improve the AFK timers than things like that. We believe adding a vote to kick promotes toxicity. Now, I get this, I really do. Um, you know, you could be in a game, and I've had it happen to me a few times before in raids on Destiny and things like that, where you kind of LFG something. I know that Anthem has its matchmaking, but similar principle, and you die a couple of times through bad placement or you get focused by ads. Whatever the reason is, you die a few times, and then, you know, your teammates just vote to kick you out of it because well they're dicks um that's why they don't want to put a vote to kick system in but i do see that they need, they need to make some changes because the afk timers were really bad in the demo i mean myself and binary were playing through a stronghold and the guy was afk from the minute we went in we managed to get all the way to the boss room and he was still in that same stronghold with us and hadn't been kicked so yeah Something needs to happen there. I know they're also uh, talking about the way echoes and things work. You know, if you've got someone that would pick an echo and just run off and not drop it into where it needs to be dropped, you couldn't progress the mission. I know they're also talking about changes to that and obviously this uh, this AFK system. So hopefully, come launch, this will be something that is greatly improved on. Moving on then, will there be different ultimates you can equip later on? The answer is we think this is a cool idea. Again, going back to the javelin idea, I think this is something that will come if they're adding new javelins. They will, of course, have new ultimates. If they don't add new javelins, then, of course, adding new ultimate abilities for each javelin that we currently have is definitely a way to kind of uh, revitalize it. Again, think to Destiny, uh, where they added in new subclasses and things like that as, as the years went on. I think that would also be something that would be very cool, uh, keep the current javelins and just change up their abilities, ultimates, and things like that. Moving on then, uh, will Anthem ever have raids, six to eight player missions? The answer is we believe in the need for uh, aspirational content. Our cataclysms represent this, more info to follow soon. Now, they have actually released quite a bit of information about cataclysms, which is uh, their kind of inspirational um, end game activity. I'm very much looking forward to it. I don't quite know how to take it at the moment. Uh, they have stayed very clear of using the term raid, so 
you know, I, I am wondering if there's going to be kind of heavy group mechanics involved or not. Um, I guess time will only tell, really. I hope that it goes down that road. Uh, I love raiding. Um, I love having group mechanics. That's, you know, something I'm hoping comes in the Division 2 raids as well. But again, time will tell. We will have to wait and see. Moving on then, uh, the next question is, will the guilds have a social space of their own? The answer is this is unlikely to come with launch of guilds. It's an interesting idea though. Now we know that launch bays obviously were introduced to the game because the community really, really wanted it and it's something that was talked about quite heavily and the devs went and added it in and that was absolutely awesome. I think it would be really cool to have a guild only kind of launch bay area where you you know a bit like a clan area you could go in and all your you know all your your guild mates are there and you can see what they're looking like maybe pick people up and go out on missions from there I think it would be really cool it would also be really cool if you could customize those areas you know and have your clan banners and things like that hanging in that certain area whether it happens or not we will have to wait and see but yeah I think it would be a pretty good idea if it was indeed added uh, next then, what if I miss stuff on the roadmap? Will I miss out forever or will it come around again? The answer is some things will only be available at the time. They may come back around later and other things will be permanently available. Eh, this makes sense, I guess. Um, it's, think again, Destiny, Division, Global Events, um, Destiny in terms of like uh, what's the one coming up uh, uh, recently? Uh, Crimson Days and, and stuff like that. You know, these events... <laughs> They probably come around once a year, certain certain things, maybe once every couple of months. Uh, there are going to be things that are there all the time. If they add in new NPCs and quest lines and stuff like that, they may be there permanently. Um, it's one of them, isn't it? it it's, a, it's a massive multi-world, it's a, a looter-shooter RPG-style game. There's going to be things that, if you miss, they're not going to be there for a very long time, if ever again. I'm personally okay with that. If I'm not on and I miss a certain event, then fine, so be it. Uh, that's just the nature of one of these games, I guess. But again, let me know what you think in the comment section down below, guys. Uh, next question. Will some bosses have unique drops? The answer is not a launch, but we are looking into it. Again, something that has been spoken about massively is how Anthem's loot pool is one massive loot pool. You, you know, you don't go to one particular place and farm a certain bit of gear from a certain boss. Now, there's good things, you know, there's good sides to that, but there are downsides to that as well. Uh, personally, I would like to see unique drops have a style similar to the division where you can get everything anywhere, but certain bosses or certain activities have a higher drop rate for certain things. Possibly, I don't know. Again, let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Uh, moving on then, I want more activities in the open world, treasure hunts, races, things like that. The answer is we will be adding new activities and things to do over time. Races would be cool. Now again, we've seen the roadmap that came out a couple of days ago. Um, there's a lot of things. They're going to be adding new strongholds, new world events, um, new challenges, new contracts, all of that kind of thing as time goes on. You know, these are going to be on bi-weekly and monthly basis. So there is going to be constant and regular updates to the game. So yeah, what kind of things we will see? Who knows, but it's going to be interesting one way or another. Uh, next question is, will there be elemental weapons slash bullets? The answer is not at launch. We want primers and detonators to be gear focused. We may add weapons that do elemental damage and don't cause combos. I guess I just talked myself into saying, yes, there will be in time. So, yeah, there are going to be elemental weapons or bullets or, you know, some kind of consumable that can make your uh, weapon shoot elemental bullets. Not sure what way they're going here. I would personally think that they would go more towards elemental weapons. Why they wouldn't make those combo though, I, I don't know. I think that would be uh, be pretty cool if, you know, if I had an ice weapon and you had, uh, I don't know, a lightning or a solar weapon and we could combo each other that way, I think it would be pretty cool. Maybe make it so that it would take a lot of bullets to cause the combo effect, but I don't understand why they wouldn't want the combo ability in there if you can combo with the same elements but via abilities and you can get those abilities back really quickly. I'm not entirely sure why they wouldn't do that, but you know, I'm not a dev, so I'm sure there'd be some kind of balancing issue there that they would need to sort out. But it's cool, you know, we're looking forward, future content, future updates, we will eventually get elemental weapons and that is awesome. Uh, finally then, to wrap things up, with primers and detonators being so powerful, what incentive do players have of using abilities that do not fall into one of these categories? The answer is they do more damage than a detonator or a primer, it's all a personal choice. So, 
yeah, there you have it. Basically, if you didn't try this out in the demo, um, the abilities that are not primers or detonators, um, they do a lot more base damage, but obviously they don't have the combo ability. Whereas if you're using um, certain abilities that combo each other or that teammates can combo, then you're going to do more damage in a wider area because you can spread the damage and things like that. And obviously the combos hit harder, but you get initial burst damage from something that isn't a primer or detonator. Again, it's useful information if you didn't know about it, guys. And that is going to wrap it up. As I said, it was a really long ask me anything. Um, there was a lot of other questions in there as well, guys, that were new and questions that we hadn't had answered before. There were a lot of questions in there that had been asked before and the dev team have answered on multiple occasions. I just pulled out all of the bits that I thought you guys would like to know about, the bits that were absolutely really, really interesting. Now, as always, you know, I would love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. It was a lot to go over. Um, I'm sure there's room for a lot of discussion. So please fire away. I would love to have a really good in-depth conversation with you about anything and everything that we have spoken about today. Now, as always, let me thank you for taking the time to watch the video. I'm going to go and wrap this up now. I'm going to get it up onto YouTube tonight. I'm not going to be about over the weekend. It is my son's birthday, so I will see you next week. Have a good night, guys. Again, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one.